Squad Radio, the music you want. With your host, Steve Dan. Well, I, I was told that I could listen to the radio at a reasonable volume. What's up, party people? It's Keys Dan with RadioWhat.com, DJLittleRock.com, coming to you live and in living color from the Radio What Studios. And this is my podcast, What Makes You Famous? It's an extension of the RadioWhat.com internet radio station that I've been running for quite some time. And if you need DJ services, where do you go? DJLittleRock.com. Check availability and get a free price quote, and maybe you can have me at your next function. Yes, partying with the people. I have mobile equipment. We'll travel. I'll bring the lights. We'll make your party look like a club. (laughs) As high energy or as low key as you want, I come to you and I become an extension of your taste. How about that? I'll play whatever you want. (laughs) Party with the people. Speaking of party with the people, today on the program, I have Dacian Myron. and We're going to get to know a little bit more about him. Who's Dacian Myron? Well, stay tuned and find out more about Dacian Myron. This week's shows, this will be the part where I usually tell people about the public shows, you know, the karaoke jams, the video dance parties at the different clubs that I get to go to. Well, right now, as we speak in April of 2020, it's uh, pretty grim out there. No shows, no public shows, no private shows. Due to the novel COVID-19 coronavirus, I have no public shows, no private shows. So it's a lot of podcasting, talking to people and getting to know more about them, promoting people. Yes, that's what we're supposed to be doing, helping each other out in this time, in every time, not just in this time, all the time, people helping people. All right, let's get into it with Dacian Myron. And I hope I've been saying his name right. Calling Dacian Myron. Now. Hi. Daki and Myron, please. Yes, uh, that is I. It's uh, actually Dacian, but close enough. Oh, no. I, I like it. It's Dacian. Dacian Myron. That's wonderful. It's Keys Dan <laughs> with the What Makes You Famous podcast. And I'm already on, the, on to a great start. Uh, mispronouncing your name right off the bat. <laughs> you know what, Dan? Don't, don't even sweat it, man. You're not the first one, I'm sure. I tell you not to be the last one. So. I wanted to be the last one. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully people... How you will- doing? We'll remember your name and know your name after this podcast. You'll be the most famous person in the whole wide world. Damn straight. can only hope. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, give the people a little idea of who you are, Dossi and Myron. Um, well, let's see. It all started <laughs> back in my mother's No, You know what? Uh, so I'm, it's funny because I'm 30 years old, but I feel like I'm still 15, right? Yeah. Uh, I, was, I was born in Romania. I don't know if you guys know where that is, a small little place. It's uh, Eastern Europe. Uh, back in 89, uh, moved to America with my mom when I was 10. So, you know, the whole chasing the American dream ordeal. Uh, started music when I was, you know, about 10 years old. I never really had many friends, didn't fit in. So I was like, what better way to be an outcast in my room than play music videos and video games, you know? So I started picking up a guitar. I was like, damn, I'm just going to play some music. Started a crappy band. Funk rock, nonetheless, because I love everything from, you know, like The Offspring. Ramones, of course, some Blink 22 back in the day, some 41, some good old alternative. But um, I, I really dig, I really dig music, man. You know, as a whole, so it kind of inspired me. Well, I dig, I dig your music, Dacian, and you know, humble beginnings. You started in Romania. Uh, to uh, to me, a, a person that really doesn't know geography that well, yes, I could look it up on the Google. It sounds like a far off land, a, a, a very romanticized place. It could be mysterious, uh, you know, along the lines of Transylvania and and the like. And and I, I wonder about that place. Now, you say you stayed there till you were 10. What are your memories of Romania growing up as a young lad? As a young lad? Well, it's, you, know, like, you know, there's a misconception going around that everybody from Romania is a vampire. So <laughs> <there's>, <laughs> but, you know, to my defense, I, I, yeah, you know, I, I guess I, I am a night owl myself. But uh, Romania itself is it's very cold uh, at, during wintertime. I think, you know, throughout the seasons, it gets pretty close to us cold at Michigan, you know, tens degrees 
Um, summer times are beautiful, especially in the mountains, very clear skies. And it's just awesome all around. Great food, amazing food from what I can remember. Lots of, um, it's a, it's very like Latin based food. So if it's, if you like Spanish or like German or Italian, it's very similar to those kind of like sausages and stuff like that. So, um, a lot of beautiful, attractive women, you know, <laughs> men are good looking there too. So good for them. You know what I mean? Well, you look in the mirror every day and you see this fine hunk of a man, you know, not that you were fishing for compliments, but I'll go ahead and throw them your way. Uh, ladies you know and, he, he, and, and gentlemen, he's, he's a good looking dude. Check it out. <laughs> Thanks. Not to sound like a narcissist or anything, but you know, I do kind of check myself out in the mirror every once in a while. That, well, you know, we have to love ourselves before anyone else can love us. Uh, you know, Damn straight. That, that's for sure. And you know, I'm, I'm a Florida, I'm a Florida boy myself. So I, I'm familiar with Tampa. I, I was born and raised in uh, born in Miami and, and raised in South Florida, the Florida Keys and, and that kind of, that the like. But, uh, I did some weddings. I, I DJed weddings up in Tampa, the home of Burt Reynolds. And I guess Whoa. that's, that's what, what makes you, uh, I mean, but did you go straight, did your family go straight from Romania to Tampa? Uh, yeah, I, well, actually we went through, uh, New Jersey and then we came directly through Tampa. We had family at that point in time. We had a grandma here and she was, she was here. That's how we kind of linked up together. I had a couple cousins, and but yeah, I was straight straight to Tampa. I mean, I've been here. Um, I I used to play in an old bands. So used to travel a lot, but I've never lived outside of Florida. So it's kind of cool that you're from Florida too. I feel like we're vibing already. <laughs> oh wait, we ate a lot of the same dirt. You know, the, the west coast of Florida is a little bit different from the south of Florida uh, culturally, but uh, I'm sure you still have your your share of Spanish f- food. And you say that Romania. A lot of people are brought together by by food, by meals. You know, hey, let's share a meal together, and that brings people together. So if you bring the food, that's a, that's already a, a big part of the culture uh, from Romania uh, to south to Central Florida or west coast, the west coast of Florida. Uh, you know, and did you did your your family still has? I mean, mom and dad are both Romanian, uh, born and bred. Well, yeah, um, my parents were born when I was young. It was just my mom. Okay, you know, brought me here, so. Uh, but yeah, she uh, she still cooks Romanian food all the time. So I'm, I'm actually going to go see her. She lives in uh, Clearwater. I live in Tampa. It's like 45 minutes away <laughs> for anybody that doesn't really know that yeah. geography. Oh. But no, I appreciate the geography lesson. We, we're going to learn something <laughs> from you, Dacian. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad, man. Uh, but yeah, she makes food all the time. I'm going to see her this Sunday, actually. She's cooking. Um, obviously, you know, the whole quarantine thing. I'm just, this is, I, I live in myself trying to, you know, distance to do the right thing. And, and uh, be good about that. But, you know, I haven't seen her in a while. I just want to make sure she's okay. So always good to check up and, you know, kind of have dinner with her. He's a good boy. He's a very good boy. <laughs> All the way from Milani- uh, Romania right to us. And so, okay. Well, tell me a little bit more about Romania. Let's go back into the, the roots uh, of it. You spent t- till you were 10. So you grew up a little bit. You went to school there a little bit. What was school like? What was the, the what was life like in Romania? Cause, you know, every, every movie representation of the Eastern Europe is, is always, you know, so, so dreary. Raunchy, and so, oh sad. my goodness. It is so <laughs> sad. Terrible. You know, little, old, little old lady with a, you know, covering over her head with some flowers. Would you like to buy some flowers? You know, or, okay. or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen Borat or Eurotrip, <laughs> yes. but there's part of like Bratislava where they go in there. It's like, oh my God, it's Bratislava. <laughs> well, Romania at one point was kind of like that, but. Uh, that was after the fall of communism, well, through, throughout communism, but after the 90s, it started shaping into a more modern, like, especially Bucharest, the capital. It's beautiful. It's like a lot of history, a lot of architecture, a lot of bars, a lot of restaurants. Nightlife is insane. So um, it's basically like New Orleans without New Orleans, but Bourbon Street, you know what I mean? So, okay, so they have American blue jeans there now, uh, you know. <laughs> Yeah, they finally adopted that like last year. Well, that yeah, that seems to be the 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 standard. Whenever uh, you know a communist country would open up back in those days, oh, we got American blue jeans now. Oh yes, yeah, you know, and, and, and yes, I, I call me racist because I just did some kind of an accent. Uh, my my that was actually pretty good. My take on <laughs> on a, on a middle on a uh, Eastern European country uh, this uh, general accent. But, uh, you know, and d- do you still have family in Romania? Have you ever visited back again or, or 10 years old? You're here and, and here to stay. Well, 
I la- it's three years ago, actually, I, I went back and I visited all my family just because I haven't seen them in a while. So it was good to catch up. I was there for about three weeks. Did um went to Italy. Did a kind of like a small little Euro trip. Um, Germany. I went to Munich for a bit. Uh, but I saw everybody there. Uh, but we just FaceTime here and there, you know, whenever everybody kind of do a group chat, whenever everybody has time, it's hard. You know, everybody has a different schedule in life. So it's just one of those things. So, I mean, so how are the people living now? I mean, I, I still visualize them as living in a, in some kind of a stone house or a castle of some kind. <laughs> you know, hey, hey, laugh, but that's, man, that, that's my, my small view. I've never been out of these United States. So I'm going to learn from you, Dacian, uh, about the world, about uh, Eastern about Europe. The world. Exactly. Yeah. Um, more so, it, I think it's it's different in the outside uh, of the cities, like the bigger scale cities, like Bucharest and and Deva and a couple of other places, because it's more like country based, hmm. and that's more like a representation of what you're used to. But the actual cities themselves, they're very well developed. They're, they're kind of like Budapest. Um, when when you go to like Prague, it's very similar. All those countries have very close ties each other so uh, it's very modernized nowadays well that seems pretty smart for tourism for the government to to get their big cities and to shape them up and that way when people come they'll see the big cities but then uh, you know i think i mentioned it on a podcast pretty recently you go off the beaten path uh you know to the left or to the right maybe a a block or two and it could be impoverished and you know but i'm hoping that, that that's not the case but it always seems to be the case. Uh, the, the it big, always is. Yeah. yeah. The big cities, uh, the, their main strips. Hey, tourists, come on over here. Check this out. We made it all shiny for you and clean. <laughs> but don't go over there. Don't go a block away. That's where the guys, right. in, the people in the tents, and they'll try to rob you over there. You know, <laughs> now, I, guess, I now, think every city has its problems. Even oh, even Miami is oh, kind of the same, you know? Right. right. <laughs> well, it kind of sounds like North Korea at this point, because obviously, you know, it's, there's only a couple places in Pyongyang they want to take you, but right. um, it, it's not as crazy as that. But I mean, I'm sure there's certain aspects where, yeah, it's crime ridden. But what country doesn't have its own crime, you know? Absolutely. So, absolutely. I, I can't it only uh, include, uh, you know, far away places because it happens right here. You know, you have these towns that are that are dying and, and the tourism will come in and, and, and build up maybe one strip. Uh, it, like New Orleans, Bourbon Street, and build up that one nice strip, and and then the rest of the city is still mm, impoverished. They, they go by the wayside. They put all their money into this one spot, so all the yep. tourists will come in and spend their dollars. Exactly, I, and you know what? It works. It works for them because if, if it, that's what attracts people, then that's what works for them. Hey, it does. It does. So tell me about well, okay, New Jersey. Uh, you spent a little time there, just kind of wandered through, and. It used like as, ten hours. <laughs> oh, okay. So it was a a, 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 a layover. <laughs> it was like a layover. Yeah, that was basically when we first came to the state. My first impression of America was Jersey. Jersey. Can you believe that? Like <laughs> shitty. Like me as a boy, I was like, "What the hell is this place?" Never oh, this been. Is what America's like. <laughs> <laughs> Never been north of the Mason Dixon really too much. So you know, I need to get up to Jersey and New York City and find out more about them. Even Chicago. You know, I, I need to find find out about those places north of forty. And, uh, and, and, uh-huh. and get, a, get some more geography, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot to see in these United States, but, uh, then you made your way to Tampa. I mean, now that right. sun, you know, fun, they, Tampa, pretty close to the water though. Right. They, the West yeah. coast. I mean, I, 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 I love it here. I think so obviously people have mixed feelings about everything living in big cities or West coast or first East coast or mountains or whatever. I love Florida to me. Uh, first of all, no state tax, right? That's what? Cool. <laughs> okay. I yeah. don't remember that. I, I left, uh, in 2009, I got here to central Arkansas and I haven't been back. Not that I don't want to go back, just that I get so busy, you know, and I'm the sole provider for my family. So I, I getting time off from all of the jobs that I do to get back to Florida is so difficult, but mom right. and grandma still in the Florida Keys saying, come on home, son, come on home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well that's that's awesome that you do that that's really cool um but yeah the uh, sunshine the weather the only thing i'm complaining about and that's not really much of a complaint mm-hmm. uh it's, it's the theme plus the people that move here that don't know how to drive fortunately <laughs> <laughs> is it just that there's so many people or uh, or that they really genuinely cannot drive because there's a lot of tourism <laughs> there people from all over the world 
it it's not as bad as Orlando with mm. tourism yet, and I hope it doesn't get that bad. <laughs> but it's just mainly people don't know how to drive. Like I feel like people literally before going to the DMV, they watch the YouTube video. Say, I can do this. <laughs> <laughs> I can really do this. <laughs> Hilarious. Now I lived in Orlando for about a year, and I remember that it was uh, about twenty pounds of poop in a ten pound bag. A lot of people there, and they're all going in circles because all the roads are made around the lakes. Yeah, interesting Lake modes. Vista. Yes, Lake Buena Vista. All interesting modes of travel, and from I, from what I remember, I, I did go to Washington D.C., and that's all pretty circular. A, a, a lot of circles, uh, driving wise. But Tampa, you say there's uh, some traffic there, uh, some congestion. It, well, it's main strip of interstate usually backs up going to downtown in South Tampa and St. Pete because there's so many cities that are like spread apart by bridges. Mm. Um, and just bridges and water. Just, that's it. That's, so that public transportation sucks here. We relied upon driving ourselves, but people can't drive. So, that's, yeah. <laughs> so you got to Tampa at 10 years old. Uh, this little Romanian boy. Did you know English? And uh... Yeah, I did, actually. I learned it. You can thank the symptoms from, for like the language I did know. I, I'm still struggling. I, I can barely talk now. But <laughs> from, yeah, I learned. Uh, some stuff from The Simpsons, watching cartoons as a kid growing up. It's pretty tight. I, am, I imagine that uh, that's the cause for a lot of people. From what I understand, I'm half Cuban. So uh, from what I understand, when I was growing up, my, my young age was uh, translating soap operas from English to Spanish for my for my grandma. That was the, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, Tell me, let me hear, let me hear let me hear one of these translations. Well, give me an accent. Cause I really dig Cuban accents. <laughs> <laughs> El viejo cabo no tiene copata. Necesito hablar español, sí, ya. Yeah. Now you know what my Spanish. I've been missing it so long. I've, I've been, you know, I used to do a bilingual radio station down in South Florida and in Miami, and there was like two English songs, two Spanish, and then our when we talked on the radio, we would talk in broken Spanish. Uh, you know, Spanglish, I guess is the the term down there. Spanglish, yeah. yeah. And I know a, a lot of people from Miami, a lot of Cubans, the the ones that I knew. Uh, would travel up into uh, the central Florida and even the West Coast. So I'm guessing you, you're dealing with a lot of the people that, that I, I might have known when I was a younger lad. I'm 51 years old. You're 20 years my junior. So you're giving me the perspective of, of someone of a of a different generation growing up. Yeah, those <laughs> damn millennials. <laughs> ah, <laughs> dig it. I, I don't like to put, put labels on people. I don't like to put labels on people. You know, <laughs> it's just not my thing. <laughs> Okay, Trump. <laughs> Get really sing songy, you know, when I'm talking about stuff. <laughs> but uh, I got it. <laughs> it makes me sound better than everybody when I try to talk like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Oh, I'm definitely yeah. That that, that really it, it it's a way of speaking. It's a way of thinking. Uh, I, but I, I do like learning from people, and I'm learning from you, Dacian. That, that just uh, you know, about how what your travels are and. And your family and, and your mom, you know, being a single mom, it seems that she, yeah. she got here. Uh, you know, do you have brothers and sisters as well? No, I'm just a spoiled single kid. Oh, I can um, dig it. <laughs> yeah. Well, dude, my mom, and I have so much respect for her. She was a single mom. And uh, she started from the ground up. She literally had no money. You know, when she got here, she worked really hard. She's a, she's a cosmetologist. She cuts hair. Um, <laughs> and she built her own, well, she started her own salon. And, you know, 15 years later, she's doing pretty well. Well, you know, minus the whole coronavirus. Yeah. Quarantine uh, thing. <laughs> I guess we could talk but, about that as we speak. But, uh, you right. know, we're we're dealing with this coronavirus. For exactly. As we record this in April of 2020, we're all pretty much locked indoors, keeping away from each yeah. other. But cosmetology, that is a job that that you'll you'll have. You know, people you're appealing to people's vanities, making them look the best that they can look. Uh, that right. is a job that man, when I took my ASVAB test in high school, it said uh, photography or beautician were my top two jobs. And I, you know, I so think you're a lot creative. Of, no, yeah, this tells I, me you're creative. I appeal to 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 people's vanities. I, uh, you know, if I if if beautician, you know, I definitely want them them to look their best. And I do notice people's hairs, and I notice your look. You have a you know really nice bushy hair, and then you have that nice little beard. Makes you look like a rock star, you know. Uh, it's just okay, you kind of you kind of describe Shaggy from Scooby Doo. But you, yes, you've <laughs> called, you've cultivated that look. 
Zoinks, jinkies, <laughs> jinkies. <laughs> but uh, you know, and, and it it appeals to. I mean, it it fits you. And, and so, mom, you know, she's she's uh she's made herself. And she's she's not. She's still working. She's still cosmetology. Yep, she still is. Um, right now, she's she took some time off from the business because you know, obviously, <laughs> a lot of everything's closed closed down. Um, but yeah, everything you know was perfect. She was doing great. Prior to that, um, so did she cut your hair growing up? Yeah, all the time, and she would kill me if I got and got a cut anywhere else. <laughs> She's my personal stylist. If, if I have a photo shoot or if I have a music video project or anything, it's I have to call my mom. <laughs> you She's better believe it. Everything. You better believe right. it. I remember my grandma making black beans and rice, and then I got married, and my wife started making black mm-hmm. beans and rice, and you know, it, it was almost a, a contest whether. Uh, are they better than mine? Well, you taught her how to make them. You know, I hope they're as good as yours. <laughs> right. You always got to count on mom, you know, make sure that mom's first. She's your number one right. gal. <laughs> right. Number one fan too. Oh, Family. absolutely. I wondered about that. Okay. Uh, so growing up, how did, how did you come into the, into the music? What, what were your, your areas of study when you, when you got here at 10 years old, the tender age of 10? The tender age of 10. Yeah, I was a I was a long lost pup. I didn't really have many friends. I said that earlier. Um, but I just I didn't fit in. So I eventually I asked my mom. I I kind of like saw a couple music videos for Blink One Eight Two and kind of inspired me to get in like the whole fun thing. Um, it, it's it's a good analogy for me because I was always a angsty rebellious kid. But I asked my mom one day. I was like, Can I get an acoustic guitar? She said, Sure. She bought me an acoustic guitar. I thought I was so bad. <laughs> I, I maybe I knew like two chords. It took me forever to just like learn a progression scale of like three or four um, chords, like D D B or or something. I don't know some some basic chord structure. <laughs> and then after a while, you know, you keep building on that. Repetition helps. Um, eventually, you get to play to a click track, and you get better. But do you remember what you kind of guitar it was? Yeah, it was a Yamaha. Oh, okay. All right, picked it up at the local music. Uh, store or, K- or Walmart or Kmart or something. So I don't remember where she got. It. I think we went to Guitar Center and she picked it up off the wall. It wasn't an extravagant guitar. I mean, I, right now I play off like a Gibson SG and, and Taylor, and I, I love them. Oh, but, he's uh, not bragging. First... He's not bragging. Oh my goodness, <laughs> you stepped up your game. Yeah, Yamaha's not <laughs> not known for their great guitars. They they do make you know quite a few different uh, audio devices of different kinds. But their their guitars are are okay. I'm sure you did fine with it, right? Yeah, yeah. It was it was a two hundred dollar model or some, yeah. something between that. You know, low low mid level tier. Good um, start. Good for starters. Yeah, so and then I mom was backing you up. She said, "You said, mom, I want a guitar," and she said, "Here you go, son. <laughs> Spoiled rotten. Ah. Do it." <laughs> and then she had to cover her ears for the past, you know, for after like the first two two or three weeks because God, I was bad. Why oh why did I buy him a guitar? <laughs> Basically, right? She didn't like. She didn't approve. Let's put it this way: she doesn't like rock and roll. Okay. My mom is. My mom loves like classic rock and roll, like let's say everything from Sinatra to Elvis. Which, by the way, my music taste. I think Sinatra, Elvis, Michael Jackson, um, Prince, of course, Freddie Mercury, and obviously Queen. Journey. Um, I say Motley Crue is probably up there too. It's weird because I'm so diverse. But also, I love modern stuff like the Killers. I love Panic at Disco, Fall Out Boy, um, and, and a lot of punk music. I love the Ramones, I love the Offspring, the Blink, Sum Forty One. Like I mentioned before, it's who I am. So, you know. Oh, it sounds like a very well-rounded musical uh, uh, schooling that you had. You know, in Blink One Eighty Two, my favorite video is all the small things where they oh, make fun of yeah. ball, uh, boy bands. It just, <laughs> oh yeah, it's hilarious. Whenever I DJ a show, uh, I try to play that song. At least once a week, maybe maybe uh, every couple of weeks, uh, just because All that video yeah. just makes me laugh. You know, it makes me smile, makes me happy, and that's what music can do, man. <laughs> exactly, exactly, and and that's the beauty of it too. And you know, if someone's feeling sad, it can just listen to a song, and it can connect to it. And all of a sudden, you're like, "Damn, I feel great now." You know, <laughs> uh, you put Queen and Elvis on that list too. Queen's my favorite, and I've been to the Heartbreak Hotel. I mean, I bring to. Uh, uh, to Graceland several times. I have a key to the Heartbreak Hotel in my pocket. Wow. Now, sadly, okay. that hotel, I stayed there, 
And I said, I'm keeping the key. And she says, everybody keeps the key. Just leave your deposit. Okay. <laughs> so I keep it. I, and then the place burned down on me. Mm, oh, man. Sad. But I still yeah. have that keepsake. But, so, well, that's so, awesome, though. You can hang that on your wall. That makes for a great story. Oh, it stays in my pocket. It's on my keychain. It's an oh, actual it okay. real key, not one of those card keys, you know? Okay, okay. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. awesome. Back in the day, kids, uh, we used to have real keys that they'd give us at the front desk. <laughs> <laughs> not anymore. No, not it's anymore. All it's digital, all digital, bro. It is. It's all card keys. Eventually, it's going to be uh, some kind of an eye test or a thumbprint that you're going to have to put down. Uh, you know, technology is great, man. And we could definitely go there because technology has shaped your industry as well. Uh, going from your $200 Yamaha guitar, maybe the, the lower to middle uh, uh, instrument and then you got better and better at your craft and you figured you had to get better instruments so what's the progression there did you did you study with someone or did you study on your own no everything i know i taught myself wow no band in school nope one time in band camp at all nothing one time in well let me so i taught myself what i how to play guitar and how to do anything really um i started a punk rock band we weren't very good but we started playing out more eventually we got better uh, and then i started a real rock and roll band that was when i was kind of successful we played with like red jumpsuit apparatus a wall nation hawthorne heights we did some tours uh, we played a couple festivals work tour and stuff like that back in the day that was like six or seven years ago wow um you still in yeah, school then, at that time i was when did you graduate? out of school when did yeah, you graduate? I, 2008 2008. Oh, just around the time that the stock market crashed. Yay. Just in time. And, and you know what? I was so broke at that time, too, so I couldn't invest in anything, which was that. But. So 2008, and you had a band at that point already? 2008, I had. That was when my old punk rock band kind of dissolved. And I was like, well, let me just start a real project. So, so what's, the name the of, trans- what's the name of the old punk rock band? Let's, let's give them some, some props. They did give oh. you a start. Oh my God! You don't want to. You don't want <laughs> <There, laughs> to. The I, iPhone I had been invented. Somebody has a recording of that somewhere. Pull it up. Um, another tragic case. <laughs> another tragic case. Shout out. Represent, man. All the the people that helped you along the way. How, how many pieces in the band? Two or three? Uh, two guitars, one bassist, and a drummer. So excellent, excellent. And were you on the vocals back then? Yeah, I was a guitar and vocal. Super, see? And you know, that's the the beginnings. You can't forget them. As as crappy as those first bands are, they did give you their your first taste of playing in front of people, getting in front of crowds. And uh, oh, yeah. you know, they're looking at Dacia and going, "Man, I, I think I like him. This band sucks, but he's got something." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's he's a character on stage, that's for sure. I think he's more entertaining than anything else to watch. So you think your front man skills were were good back then? I think they were mediocre. Okay. To slightly average, above average. Did you take any any dance at all or, or, you know, work in the crowd, public speaking? (laughs) I kind of broke up crowd with like my thrusting hip skills and stuff. But, you know, I I didn't pull that out all the time. It was was very inappropriate. I mean, you're real, you're real close to new college. So you might've had some clowning skills and. You know, I, I, I did go uh, to, to the new college one for one week to learn how to do some clowning for, for firefighting. It, it was like a one-week class. I said, hey, uh-huh. you want to go over here and, and learn how to, how to be a, fi- a clown firefighter? Put on makeup? I said, okay, just down the street from you. <laughs> so you never know no, what I, skills could be picked up, man. And what other skills right. did you pick up growing up in, in, in high school? And, and did you make it, when you got out of high school, did you make it? into college uh, did mom say go to school have a fallback yes yes absolutely and you know what i i went to college i was majoring in marketing advertising mm. um b- believe it or not i actually i have a full-time job now aside from music good I work for uh coca-cola i'm an, I'm an account manager for them uh, for a couple of their accounts so yeah it, there's a company i, I don't think's gonna close anytime soon <laughs> they've been around a long time 125 years good probably job 125 years after Back too. <laughs> so, um, you know, I'm very thankful to, to say I still have a job. So I'm very grateful for where I'm at. But the reason why I can afford to do anything I can now is because of the company. I'm not backed by like a label or any marketing company or any publishing company or any anything else. I, I Everything I do is on my own. Very good, man. I mean, anybody that looks at your page 
uh, your your various things, looking it up by by your name, uh, Dasi and Miron. And I'll I'll definitely put that on the show notes notes and your various places that that people can find you. But anybody that looks, your production values are good. You know, your YouTube is crazy filled with with content. Uh, you know, just you can spend spend a lot of time just listening to your music and and having a good, really just a good day rocking out, man. I, my head was shaking, my hands up in the air, waving like I do care. You know, Right on, man. That's awesome. Well, yeah, I love rock and roll, so I'm hoping to bring, you know, not just, I, so I love, mu- I love music, but I also love movies. And aside from movies, I love classic movies, like super classic mobster movies are my thing. Um, so that's where I got like the Young Funk influence from. Okay. Kind of like built, I kind of like, create a storyline for that uh i'm actually creating a concept album right now and it's each song is going to lead into a different story and a different kind of like music video but they're all going to be kind of related hey themed in a, in a albums band. are wonderful man i mean uh, you know michael jackson definitely came up with one it, it, you know and then quite a few bands have have had concept albums that have been uh, put out in video and i know your videos have high production value i mean who's Who's taking your videos before we even talk about how the music is being produced? Who's, who's producing the music videos? Uh, so I have a couple really talented friends that I was growing up with in, in the scene. Um, a lot of them own their own production company mm-hmm. and yeah, they, they do give me a huge like uh, help when cause I still pay for them, mm-hmm. but they, they give me a huge reduction in rates because I, you know, I grew up with the guys. Well, give so, credit where credit is due. Give shout outs, you know, make sure that people absolutely. know how to get a hold of them and maybe they can get their music, uh, not just out, out in, uh, on audio, but also visualized. Absolutely. Uh, well, it, Young Funk was shot at Envision Productions in St. Petersburg, Florida. Mike Sheehan owns that company. So hi, Mike. <laughs> and uh, Feeling Dangerous, my other single, was shot by Kyle O'Brien in Tampa, Florida. And he has a production company called Motion Mind. They actually do huge videos with like Tampa Bay Lightning, uh, B.O.B. I don't know if you know B.O.B. He's a rapper, but he's pretty big. Come on. <laughs> Come on, Sean <laughs> DJ over yeah. here. He had one but with Bruno did. Mars that really kicked him out into the world. Yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, he, he's done videos with them and they've, you know, they've done stuff for me. So I'm very thankful for them. So they're going to keep producing my music videos and we'll, you know, uh, I only have two songs now, but I'll, Mm -hmm. yeah, only started like eight months ago. So we'll see. Okay. So really you've been buckled down. Uh, You got this job with Coca-Cola. You know, you did the marketing. Uh, How far did you get in the marketing when you got out of school? I guess that was uh, 2009. You, you got off into college and how far did you go there? I was spent about two years in college and, and I, I, I uh, I don't know if I made the right decision, but I, I I dropped out. Hey, I've been to college a bunch of times. You know, mostly it's it's for certain different things. You know, I, I went to the, to radio school uh, just enough to get me you know my my radio certificate. I went to fire school right there, pretty close to you in Ocala, uh, and and, um, and that's when I made that little that little jaunt. Uh, hey, spend an extra week and go to clown school. Sure, why not? <laughs> so <laughs> right. you, know, you know, college it, it it's it's Hey, I give it up to the scientists and the mathematicians. They're going to save the world. All the doctors right, out there right. say, yeah, I agree. Big ups. It's just not for me. And I, I can see that it's not for a lot of people. <laughs> you know, but I agree 100%. You got the school of life, man. You, you, you had a mom that was backing you up all the way. And she did have the, the wherewithal to uh, tell you, go try some school and have something to yep. fall back on. And you did. You got a, a decent job with a big company. Yeah, so you're a good, upstanding citizen of the of the community, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> D- I, I, Dacey and Myron. Per- perfect. I man. pay, I pay my fair share in taxes here and there. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I thank you for that because I got my my twelve hundred dollars stimulus check that's going to be uh, costing me and every other taxpayer eighteen thousand dollars. Ah. Oh, fantastic! I'm glad you got it because I didn't get it. So. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's going to cost us all, man. But uh, yeah, hey, there's there's my little political rant. I'll. I'll probably inject a, a few of those. I'm not not very up on politics, but when stuff that that affects me uh, as personally as that, and people people don't know. Oh yeah, I got my check. 
uh, you know what? It's going to cost you eighteen thousand dollars. You got twelve hundred of it of your money. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, and, and you and you can bring politics all you want. Like I'll I'll debate it <laughs> and like I'll but I'll keep it reasonable because I listen to everybody's opinions. You and, know what I mean? Because you're so, living right down the middle. That's where most people live. Come on down exactly. the middle. Don't go to the left exactly. or the right. You know, Democrat, Republican, we're all right about here. <laughs> that's, that's the problem. We only have two parties. You know, yeah. and fortunately, two party system in a country doesn't equate for, you know, <laughs> there's always going to be people that have opinions better than yours, apparently. So. Well, the thing is, man, with the two party system, you have to be all in. If you're a Republican, you got to be all Republican, everything they believe. And if you believe anything that the Democrats believe, ooh, we're going to punch you right out of here. You know, exactly. <laughs> We're going to tweet about you. You you get kicked out of the club. So uh, exactly. I guess I don't, I don't know. Democrat, Republican, just just American. How about that? I'll be how about a citizen of the world. That sounds exactly. good. Exactly. <laughs> hey, as long as you're a good person and you have good intentions and you do what's right for your country and you're proud to be where you're at, then you know that's more for me. I, I can respect that. Hey, it sounds like you're doing it, man. I mean, you're you're you. You got a good job. You pay your taxes. You're doing the right thing. You're following the law, you know. But uh, you know, and so Coca Cola. went, I mean, did you have any other uh, jobs between uh, high school and and Coca Cola? Yeah, uh, I actually. It's funny because you mentioned you work for a radio station. I worked for CBS Radio for about three years. Ah, how about that? Working for the big company, that? the big dogs. As I, I've worked for mom and pop stations. Uh, which was probably my last station that I worked with down in South Florida, Exito 105.5. It's not there anymore. And then I've also uh-huh. worked for Clear Channel and big, you know, oh, stations, wow. Radio yeah. One and, and some of the, you know, ac- it, was it com- uh, com- uh, com- not Comcast? Comcast. I- no, it was, and it was a um, stimulus. Was, no, co- cumulus. cumulus. Cumulus, radio. cumulus. I've done, you know, I've worked for a lot of the big companies and you don't have that freedom, but you do have security of some kind. Until they yeah. change, until they change and, formats, and and then you're out of there. I, I or until tell, you make too much money and they cut you. <laughs> exactly. I've always told broadcasters, you're not a real broadcaster till they fire you. And it's not because you were bad at broadcasting. It's because they changed formats, and we okay, we're cleaning the house, we're changing from pop to country to R and B to something, you know, and and you just don't fit that format anymore. But wait, exactly. I, can, I can spin any album. I'm like. I'm like Dacian. I I, right. uh, I I I listen to everything. I love everything, you know. <laughs> right. Well, unfortunately, it's not what they want in an image, you know. Because if you're catering to a certain demographic, then if you don't fit that, then that's that's the way it is. Just like, for instance, if I love rock and roll, will I ever make? Will I ever be like marketed as a boy band? Definitely not. <laughs> I can I can guarantee you that. <laughs> but uh, three years at CBS, what kind of uh, what were you doing there? I was just in promotions. That wasn't a huge job for me. I was barely making twenty five k a year. <laughs> but the swag, man, they, you know, you th- swag. They they think, uh, hey, I can pay my rent with these CDs and T shirts. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, pal. Yeah, so, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> but did, no, I yeah, I met a lot of cool contacts, and and, that, and kind of like that's when I first got in, into like the, the realm of marketing and advertising, and. I kind of figured out like what, what to do and how to network with people and how to build relationships. You know what I mean? Oh that's, yeah. You're learning that side of the, of the business, you know, to where that's really the end side, the, where the music gets played and then hopefully people will go out and buy your records or at least that's what it used to be. People don't even buy records anymore. It's singles nope. now, you know, now you nope. have two singles out there and hopefully they're getting some traction. They don't even, you know, radio terrestrial radio still has a place uh, don't get me wrong you know people in their cars sometimes still do turn on the radio and, you yeah. know but me i listen to podcasts all day and you know if yep. i i'll make my own playlist and put on some daisy and myron songs and you know uh, spend my whole day going but uh you know but you you were you had a taste of of what it was like the end of the, the of end the of the glory. Yeah. The glory. I'd say like the 2000s, the late 2000s were probably like the last of good for radio. I think in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, I left, um, uh, I left that station in Miami in 2008, uh, December 31st, 2008. Cause they were going to go from bilingual to all Spanish and the Spanish that I know it hurts my head. Cause I think in English, I have to translate it into Spanish and then speak it out, you know? Right. 
So it really was hurting my head trying to do all Spanish. So that's what happens. You know, the format changes. Sometimes you got to go. But how did you end up leaving CBS? Uh, Not on good terms. My uh, old boss. Yeah. My old boss got fired. Mm. He was making too much money. (laughs) And um, they, I didn't get along with one of the new program directors and they, they cut me. Yeah. They, they found a reason to cut me and they did. You are a real broadcaster, whether you were ever on the air at all. <laughs> and I'm sure you, you, you got on a little bit, probably on I did. remotes. Yeah. yeah, I did actually. Uh, I, could, I don't know if you know, wow, 94 one. I was, I was on, on there for a bit and I was on Q105 too for a little bit. So. Cool. What kind of music was oldies. the format? Legendary oldies. Uh, not so it's more like eighties and stuff now, but before when I was there, uh, before they kind of changed their demographics, they were like sixties and seventies. So everything from like the Beatles <laughs> to Janis Joplin and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Thank you, you for wonder. saying that because a lot of times when I'm talking to people of a certain age, such as yourself, you're, you're a younger man and they say oldies. And I say, please don't say stuff. I listened to in high school. Please don't say stuff. I listened to in high school and bam, here they come with my stuff from the eighties. Class of 86 <laughs> rules, baby. <laughs> 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 so oldies uh, means means a lot to, uh, to I mean, means different things to different generations. <laughs> right. So, uh, uh, and so that was your, that was your format. That was your taste of working on terrestrial radio. Yeah, and then after that, I mean, where, where did you go from there? That was your marketing skills that you learned in college. Uh, how, you know, were you still playing music at this point? Uh, I actually, took a break because that was like the end while I was still working at radio that was like the end of the rock and roll band I was in mm-hmm. uh, and I took a break for about five years for music because I didn't know what I wanted to do I didn't know whether I just wanted to pursue a full time job and just be a normal member of society you know mm-hmm. go out there get a job they said buy a house <laughs> be a productive member of society they said contribute contribute buy <laughs> sounds so, like a punk song right there <laughs> You know, it's kind of cliche, but it's sort of true. No, but um, absolutely true. You know, you're you're just uh, you didn't want to be uh, working for the man. You want to be working for yourself. But but I figured you working on the radio, man. All all it takes is a you bringing a guitar out to one of these remotes, and I mean that adds a little bit of flavor. If you've got a skill like playing guitar, man, you can take that acoustic out there, that Yamaha, and, and go play for the for the people while you're slinging uh, albums and bumper stickers. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that, that's the one thing I could have done. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, of course, I'd never did that because mm. if I feel like it's, it's a little tacky if you bring your stuff out there to kind of self promote while you're working on <laughs> on you know a different thing. It's, it might maybe it's my own view or anything. I, I don't really like to always self promote like that. <laughs> if people come across my music and they like it, that's amazing. But <laughs> I don't really want to go out of my way and say, "Hey, check me out. This is why I'm so much better than everybody else." that's just it when i was djing back in 86 it was two turntables and a microphone and that's all i needed i didn't have to be anything else now i have to be the marketer the the get the artist the the yeah. promoter i have to be everything in one person you know the lighting right. lighting and and smoke machines and bar, you know i have to i have to bring the whole show all on my yep. own where it used to be just bring my turntables and and go man and hook up into their sound system and that was how it was. But now you got to be everything. You got to be everything. Yeah. I noticed that your, your uh, Facebook is very colorful. I'm guessing that you uh, did the, the artwork or is somebody else doing the artwork for you? Uh, no, somebody else did it. And, and that's actually my photographer. It, just, it was a really last minute get together banner. Shout I outs, happen to be shout honest. outs for photographer. We got Paul Bostrom, Tampa, yeah. Florida, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Really good. Uh, but the thing is, I, I love the eighties, so that's why I'm kind of like hoping to bring that back. I want to fuse the eighties with like funk. Funk <laughs> music and rock and roll, which is weird. It sounds weird, right? But I love electronic and, and synth music, but I want to put rock and roll behind that. I feel like I just gotta add some different things to, to make myself stand out more. Well, I got no problem with that. I mean your 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 profile picture looks like karate kid and your uh banner looks like uh Robert Palmer. Uh, simply irresistible. <laughs> so, you know, you, you got the eighties down there, kid, it, I, yeah. you know, back in, I guess it, w- it must've been the turn of the century back in the, in 2000, you know, all the way in the future. Um, I, I had, a, I had a girl come up to me while I was DJing at a party and she said, wow, this is great. Uh, why don't they make any more eighties music? 
when that <laughs> you see you see where i'm at but yeah yeah <laughs> but you can have music with 80s flavor i mean i've uh aren't there new bands that are coming out that have a lot of electronica and are yep. you inspired by that mm, um i'd say yes and no okay because so i feel like this whole 80s you know music goes in cycles right and mm-hmm. i feel everybody's trying to catch this whole cycle that's coming back to the 80s right now uh, oh, yeah. i don't know if people have noticed that but there's a huge trend going around that because bands like uh 1975 and you know other bands that have done similar styles but it's coming back and everybody's trying to hop on this at the same time and everyone's going to try and mass produce these sounds that sound so different. And then I feel like they just lose their identity after a while. But I feel like it's important to, to know the direction you want to go and still have those influences that makes you different. Well, I, I've said it before and I apologize for people that have heard it already. You know, it cycles are every 20 years. The 60s come back in the 80s, come back in the 2000s. You know, it's every 20 years when when you grow up, you, when you, when a person becomes about 18, 19, 20, starts to try to find their own identity, oftentimes the girls and sometimes the guys will go digging in mom and dad's closet to find, you know, some interesting outfits uh, to wear, to make themselves stand out a little bit. But in, in that they're digging out things that might've been 20, you know, might've been in style 20 years ago. So that's why the cycle in fashion and ultimately in music and everything else comes out. And this is something that I just came up with. Uh, you know, it, it hit me in the head. I went, really? Well, you know, I, I'm so, it's so weird that I'd never thought of this before. That You, you know what? Be, yeah, that's a really good point. You, that's, that's a really good point. You would be digging in mom and dad's closet. In fact, uh, what is it? Macklemore that said, uh, uh, go thrift shopping. And what is he thrift yep. shopping for? Granddad's old, uh, old clothes. You know, stuff that uh, that happened before. So it, it all right. comes back in cycles, man. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Profound. Uh, all right. This is, <laughs> this is me getting on a, on a soapbox and learning some stuff uh, about myself while I'm talking to Daisy and Moron. Uh, my, uh, Daisy, <laughs> yeah, oh, my gosh. Did I just say that? I'm not editing yeah, anything. You did. I said That's it. That's fine. No, pronounce you your did. name one more time properly. Deshaun Moron. Deshaun Moron? <laughs> no, I'm totally messing with you, man. It's uh, it's Dacian Myron. Great, I've been saying Dacian the whole time, and you're you're not yeah. correcting me. <laughs> no, because I think it's funny. Okay, Dacian, Dacian Mar- Myron. <laughs> <laughs> you think it's funny? Hey, never let people t- say your name wrong. And, and, and you know who named you? Mother. Mother. And were you named after anyone in the family? I was named after a uh, actual old Roman general back in like. 200 BC. That's cool so, in the gang right there. I, I guess I could say uh, pretty much royalty, you know? Oh, yeah. You got roots, man. You got roots like an oak tree. You know, I got roots like a radish. <laughs> I can't I can't go back more than a generation or two. <laughs> so what, what are you? Are you Irish? Or? I'm half oh, Cuban, half Cuban. Irish. Yeah, half Cuban, half tell. Irish. Now, the I Irish tell. Uh, is done. Irish, I, I, I finished probably at Grandpa, and I can't go any further than that. And then Cuban? I mean, once they came over from Cuba, my grandma, my great grandma, I guess, done. Mm-hmm. Can't go any further than that. Some people string it back 200 years or more. Yeah, that's I, crazy. I, I'm pretty sure you can probably get back that way, that far. Uh, I haven't tried, but you know that maybe I should. I mean, <laughs> that'd be a cool thing to say. Hey, um, I'm old. I'm an old king. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> well, you were definitely named after somebody that, of great importance. Uh, do you know yeah. what the name means, or or it was just that guy's da- name? I think it was just his name. Uh, well, it was actually based on the Dacian civilization. Yes. There, there was the, the Dacians were actually a group of people. And there was the Dacian king, which were ba- basically a barbarian nomad that got con- conquered by the Romans prior to. It was like throughout the time of Mesopotamia was still a thing. So I, I, I know a lot of weird shit. So. No, great <laughs> name, mom. Good job. You know, that gave you a fighting chance. A lot of people ask what's in a name, including mm-hmm. Shakespeare. And then here you are, you got this name and it, it, it gives, it has power already. Y- you grew up with this and you know, I'm sure kids on the playground might be uh, saying different things about your name. Uh, you know, you can always twist it up and kids are cruel. I don't know. Do you have any problems bully with bully? Uh, no, I mean, not anymore. But when I, when I first came here, yeah, a lot of people didn't like me because I was so weird. 
but <laughs> I am weird. I, I honestly, I love being weird. I mean, I make stupid videos all the time, and I still feel like I'm 15 at heart. But I think that's what makes me me. And if you don't like me, then it sucks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're a creative person. Yeah, creatives are, are generally categorized as weird, but I don't. I don't think you're weird, man. I think you're just a person trying to find his way in the world. And, and it seems like you're you're doing it, man. You you've had this good job at Coca Cola. Uh, and, and it's helping to support your music, man. Uh, you know, that's what it is. I, I have an insurance job and then I have my creative job. And, right. you know, thankfully I have both, you know, because uh, Coca-Cola, I'm sure they got some really good health insurance and that covers that at least. Yeah, Whew. we're, yeah. They still got you working I, I on the streets or, or you, you stuck at home? I'm all work from home currently. I mean, uh, it's all we can do right now. Can't, wow. can't do anything else. Can't, yep. No, well, okay. I mean, shoot. All right. Well, as we're recording this, uh, you know, in this time, uh, you say that you have uh, family. Your mo- your mom's forty five minutes away. And if I calculate, I don't like to to calculate ladies' age, but she's got to be around twenty years older than you. So you know, got the the age in that she needs to to take care of herself a little bit uh, more yeah. than than a younger person would. And how are you taking care of your mom? Well. She actually does pretty well at taking care of herself. She's very, like, she eats very natural. She actually, she eats way better than I do. And I just don't really, I don't know. I mean, I exercise and I work out a lot. <laughs> but for she's just like organic this, organic that. I got to eat what's good, vitamins, nutrients. That's me. So I, she's already on top of that you know, way more than I am. So Well, all right. Taking, yeah. She got, she got anybody taking care of with her? Is she staying alone or? Oh, she's uh yeah she's their boyfriend oh well good good she's got hey it's good to have love uh, how about you mr dacian uh any love in your life man i i'm a magnet for terrible relationships <laughs> you don't want to ask me if any kind of love my tinder profile literally says i'm just an emo kid from tampa florida happy to get out of my mom's basement <laughs> so. wait oh, tinder when it's good is it swipe left or swipe right when it's good it's right Swipe right. It's a, you know, my Tinder profile just says, go ahead and swipe, swipe left. Just swipe left. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder I wonder how many times that's worked. I mean, <laughs> that right, reverse psychology is kind of <laughs> probably, yeah. <laughs> my Tinder profile, do not swipe right. <laughs> right. All right. So so love hasn't found you yet, but your, your love for music definitely has. You got your two songs out there that can be found on Spotify and, and all around the, the world. Are, are they getting good? Uh, good feedback, good vibes. What, are you playing anywhere, or at least were you playing anywhere live? Yeah, well, I actually have never played live as with my new solo Whoa. project. <laughs> yeah, can you believe it? I so here's my find it hard to believe, but go ahead. Yeah, but, well, don't worry. A lot of people do too. So what I'm doing right now is I'm I'm going to build the album. Mm-hmm. Um, I only have two songs, so nobody cares about me playing live for two songs anyway. Um, I have more unreleased songs, which I can send you after this. Mm-hmm. If I have been already, but um, I'm not going to start playing live until I get this album solidified, and I'm hoping to get it out by the end of the year if this thing is still, you know, like around. But um, yeah, we're looking at May first, June. It, it, it's it seems like the timeline is just about right. Uh, China took uh, three months to get out, get back out on the streets from January till. Just last right. week, they started getting back out in the streets. So we got quarantine May 23rd. So I figure around May, we'll, we'll, May. we'll be good to go. Get out, get back out in the streets. And, yep. and, you know, so you've got two. I mean, you're not a guy that does covers and and, and plays no. party band. I hate, I hate covers. I gotcha. hate playing other people's music. I, I don't know. To me, I love writing my own music. And I, I get more fun out of playing my own songs. That says a lot about but you, man. That's good. Uh, you know, you're a creator and you're not going to play it unless you made it yourself. That's that says something about your style, about who you are. That's good. Well, it's, I mean, m- maybe people are like, well, that's, that's ri- kind of ridiculous. Uh, and I get it. You know, I, everybody has their own thing, but I've never really found joy in, in singing somebody else's song. Well, that's just that it. You're going to work harder than anyone else. That's because a lot of people can find somebody else's song and play and make a pretty good living as a party band go out and do weddings and corporate events and stuff, you know, and play. And then, yes, as they start writing their own music, incorporate that. And it starts becoming, you know, 90, 10, 90%, 10% new, new stuff. And then it starts going 50, 50. And as they get better, that's one way to do it. 
but you don't want to do it unless you've got a hundred percent Daisy on Myron music out there. Yeah, correct. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That says a lot about you, man. You're going to work twice as hard to get it out there. And, uh, yeah, I, I admire you. <laughs> I admire you. Thanks, uh, man. I it, appreciate that. Oh, for sure. Uh, but, uh, you know, thankfully you got, you got the day job and how, how, how are you getting your, your music produced? Uh, the, the audio portion, we already talked about how you get your videos out there. You got this fine, uh, this mm-hmm. see Mike Sheehan with envision out there in St. Yep. Petersburg doing, uh, helping you get the visual, but how do you record the, the audio? Are you, do you, do you have help or are you doing that in your room? Uh, no, uh, I've worked with a couple producers in my life, but, uh, recently for this new project, I, I uh, started working with a producer out of Columbus, Ohio, I should say new album, which is basically right in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, his name is Kevin Langford mm-hmm. and he's really fantastic. Like he's probably the best producer I've worked with that understands the direction I want to go and kind of compliments, you know, we're writing together. So it, it's a fun process. Uh, as far as like he understands the direction I want to go. Now, is this a person you've met face to face or is this the internet? So it's funny because originally I just uh, came up, one of the bands had be recorded back in like 2013. Uh, they put a music video out on YouTube and I really liked the sound, like the, the audio of how it was mixed and mastered. And I was like, man, I think this guy is really good at mixing. And I think I can really get behind the sound. So I added him on, well, I did some research. I added him on Facebook and I uh, shot him a message, um, you know, just to kind of see, hey, man, what's going on? You know, I saw your music and I think you're fantastic. So this is what I want to do. This is who I am. This is my style of music. Are you on board? Do you want to help me achieve this dream? You want to go to the moon? And he's like, hell yeah. So basically. And, and you, but you've never met face to face? No, no. We fly, I fly out there. Uh, when I, I recorded Feeling Dangerous last year in July, uh-huh. and I flew out there last year like four times. So I fly out to Columbus oh, okay. every so three you, or four months. Yeah, You recorded, recorded in his studio. studio. Yeah. Oh, correct. fantastic. Because I, I, I have talked to a lot of artists that have never met their producers or remixers or, or sometimes haven't even met some of their bandmates. I talked to a fellow in, uh, in, in Sydney, Australia, and his guitarist is in the Middle East, and, and his drummer is in Germany. So... Uh, you know, so crazy, the, right? Yeah, the internet is is incredible, and the, you know they send their drum beats and their bass uh, riffs or guitar riffs to, back to Sydney, Australia, and he mixes them all down. So I, I think the internet is great, man. Bringing bringing uh, even Hell more yeah. possibilities. Uh, you know, you you could you could uh, you could work with people you have never met. It's fantastic. But you actually really have been to Columbus, and and I, from what I understand, that's a pretty big music town as well. It is just because obviously Ohio State is there and mm-hmm. a lot of kids um, around the area are just really crappy and, and really musically inclined. So um, that, I'm sure that helps a little bit. Yeah. All right, then. Well, I mean, I, you know, we've we've been chit-chatting for a little while, Dacian, and I've gotten a little idea and the listeners have gotten a little idea of who you are. I mean, that's that, that's where you are up to right now, working on this new album. How many songs do you think you want to you want to have before you actually put out an album? And do you, I mean, do you think you really have to do albums? It's all singles now. Nobody- it really is. I, I agree with you, but here, man, I'm really old school. So Ooh. I say, yeah, albums may be dead, but hell, I'm bringing that shit back. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you think you'll ever put it on vinyl? You know, I, I think there's some. some oh yeah. Kids I'm going to do, doing- I'm going to do CDs. And I'm going to vinyl too. So <laughs> I'm going to do like a whole poster deal too, of like super limited edition shit too. See, that's just it. The artwork. I mean, that's what I miss about albums. Pull it, you know, cause I, all right, there was a corner in Fort Lauderdale when I was growing up, when I was a, a little baby DJ and still in high school doing all the high school parties. And I would go to the corner. There was a, a, a uh, an arcade called McSugars in Fort Lauderdale. And then right next door was the record store. And let me tell you, when I pulled up in my, in my Mustang with the little bass lines all over it, and, you know, anybody in the eighties could tell you, Oh yeah, the bass lines. I remember that. And, and, and the, I'd pull back and, and here comes the, the record store owner. Hey, Dan, I got some new stuff for you. Come check it out. You know, and I remember the artwork was what really brought me in uh, to a lot of the new stuff. And, you know, and I, I, I missed that. I missed buying a record album, seeing the artwork, but I, I think that visually you're, you're already, you're already getting it. I mean, do you have ideas for what you want on the, on the cover and, and the, 
the notes, the line, the note, the liner notes. Oh yeah, it's gonna be very '80s based. I'll send you. Tell you what, I'll send you the album cover. It's not fully done yet. It's just my idea, <laughs> I'm trying to get it out there. But I'll send it to you after we're done talking. Deal. No, yeah, that sounds great. Uh, good, and you're still getting help from your photographer, or you're doing this on that part uh, on no, your no, own. No, this is. A, I have a graphic designer that I'm working with. So everybody, I, I have like a team behind me um, that I'm kind of working with individually. The man but, works well with others. Good deal, man. man. Except with a band, apparently, because <laughs> I don't do. <laughs> Not that punk band, but I mean, shoot, they they gave you your start. You did you did some good things there. I'm sure some people appreciate uh, the that band uh, in 2008 as it was going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I made some long lifetime fans for sure. But who knows? And, and stories from th- for Thanksgivings to come. Did I ever tell you about that band I saw back in 2008? They were crazy. And that front man, he was hot. <laughs> yeah, I was good looking back then, that's for sure. Uh, you still are, man. You work out, you, you know, you you stay you stay in shape and and you know, you you're not just working out on your body, but you're working out on your mind. You you got your your songwriting going. How many songs do you think you have in your in your pocket that are ready to go? Uh, ready to go? I have about 20 to 25. Total, wow. I have about 40 songs. Very um, respectable, man. Very respectable. That that is a concert right there. Forty songs for sure. Twenty five. Hey, the, you're you're an opening band for sure. You know. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Uh, if you go to a studio and you only go with five songs, <laughs> I'll tell you. What, I'll be completely honest with you. Uh, if you think the Beatles go to a studio and record, hey, these are the ten songs we want to record. The producer is like, no, we're gonna take like three or four of the best songs and scrap the rest and put them on like, like maybe bonus tracks. It, what they do is they go in there with like 30 or 40 songs. And these are the songs that are going to be the best. So that's the, cause I mean, you got to think if you're going to make an album of that caliber, you have to each song from like, Hey Jude to obviously their biggest songs. I mean, they just have to be amazing. You can't just settle for, Okay, this one's good, so I think I'll just put it on there anyway. Oh yeah, you go in with an idea, but the, the but like I said, you you work well with others. You got a producer that has a good ear that knows what works. He's probably right. been doing it for years, and right. even producers that have just started out still have that that idea, that mindset. All right, you know that is a great idea. That's a good riff. That's a good uh, lyric. Let's do it this way. Let's record this a few different ways and see what sounds best. Yeah, yeah, it's it's good to have a an editor, uh, so to speak. You know, for people for sure. to to put it in terms of the movie business uh, editor. Now, you say you were into movies too. Uh, I mean, as we round this out, what kind of movies are you into? <laughs> well, I love, like I said, uh, classic movies are fun, but I also love like cyberpunk movies too. But to give you an idea, I like stuff from like you know, obviously you mentioned your Cuban title, Scarface, one of my favorite <laughs> movies of all time. Um, are you a hip hop artist? Hanks. Come on, man. <laughs> Me, no. I love hip hop. <laughs> yeah, you know. Hey, who doesn't? But uh, you know, Scarface. How did how did they be- that become the the hip hop go to poster? <laughs> I don't know. That that's a good question. I have no idea. You think it'd be more like yeah, whatever? You know, anything else? Know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything? I, I don't. I don't think of Tony Montana as a hip hop artist. <laughs> I don't either. He, to me, it's very punk rock. To me, Tony Force, Montana. Yes. Is like, do what he you know what wants, I mean? you know, a exactly. rage That's against the machine, all that. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But I mean, movies like that, the Shawshank Redemption, um, okay. you know, just good, good caliber movies. You know, Forrest Gump and Shawshank came out the same year and, and uh, Forrest Gump is, uh, Tom Hanks is going, Shawshank! <laughs> the Shawshank beat him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Forrest Gump was good too. I mean, Tom Hanks, he's a hell of an actor, dude. Oh, yeah. 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 All right. Well, I mean, shoot, uh, we've been talking for a little bit. I- I'm sure I'll catch up with you in the future uh, from time to oh, yeah. time as t- as things progress, as the album shapes into fruition. You know, we've got this t- these two songs fully produced. The 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 videos are out there. I know that my first show back will, will be a-, a video dance party, probably at the Rab in, in Conway, Arkansas. And I'll be playing that Dacey and Myron uh, video for the people and they'll go who's oh, that thanks man. Oh, i like to break up break out new stuff that's what djs are supposed to do break out new artists especially club djs are supposed to be breaking out new artists now if you have your hands tied by you know a big giant radio corporation to get your song on terrestrial radio 
It takes yeah. a little, you know, we, we already want the top 100. Well, how do you become the top 100? How do you become right. the top 40? You, you, yeah, you can. Unfortunately, there is the labels own everything. They're like, well, we don't want anybody else that's not part of our affiliation. So they, they, they control it all, man. Yeah. So I'm glad that you're, you've gone uh, independent. I mean, a lot of the, uh, the record companies are running scared because you can do it on your own. You know, yes, they can distribute all your, your music and make a, a million dollars and then you might see a hundred thousand or you could distribute it yourself, uh, make a hundred thousand and keep a hundred thousand on your own, you know? So, uh, there's two, I, I, two schools I, of I thinking, agree. you know, uh, maybe not as many people are listening to your music, but you still have the same profit and you have all the, uh, you know, all the headaches and all the, the rewards as well. And to be quite honest with you, Dan, yeah, I don't care about the money. Like, if I could right now, I would put my songs. I mean, I, my songs I can give them out for free. Like, I don't care about that. Yeah, well, to yeah, me, that's I just because have you're a creator. And, you're an artist, but but your mom uh, would be more sensible and say, "Hey, yeah. why don't you make a couple bucks? You know, you've of you've course, put this out yeah. to the world. Let's let's make a couple bucks on it. You know, feed your feed not just you, but your kids. You know, your future family out there. You know, because uh, you know, mom wants grandkids." Of course. I said that for her. I did. I said that for her. <laughs> I know. I know. You, I know you did. I, uh, but I already told her I'm going to disappoint her with that, too, because I'm 50 50. <laughs> <Okay, maybe. laughs> <laughs> All right, Daisy Young. Well, I mean, I was, usually I end these things off with uh, last words for the people. Uh, Daisy and Myron, you could t- say uh, a few words to live by, stuff that you've you've heard in the past, maybe a great saying or. You know, something that, yeah. that that you live by or just whatever pops into your head at this moment in time. Daisy and Myron, give the last words for the people. I just want to say, stay safe out there. This is a crazy time for everybody. And just, uh, you know, be kind to each other and love each other. It's the only thing I have to say. Just don't do anything stupid. Well, there you have it, party people. Daisy on Myron. Find him everywhere. You can go to DacionMyron.com. If you don't know how to spell it, uh, just look in the show notes and you can find it there. Dacion Dangerous is what he's going by. It looks like he's he's marketing that. He's getting that branded. And it's one of his songs, uh, Dacion Dangerous. Find him everywhere on the Twitter, the Instagram, the YouTube, the Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> he's he, he's a, a, a gentleman that's going places, putting out that good, good rock music. And his own flavor, his own style, and it's all him because you know, uh, you know, he's a creative, and he wants to put all that out there. He wants to make sure that it's well produced, and he has a full album before he takes it on tour. Uh, you know, that's a certain way of thinking, but he's going to be working twice as hard to make sure that you get a good product, uh, something good for you to listen to while you're doing your things, while you're exercising, or walking around or possibly doing your dishes or vacuuming your living room. Well, I, maybe I guess you make you have your headphones on the vacuum might be kind of loud. <laughs> I can see you rocking out to Dassey on my run. <laughs> and I know I've mispronounced his name at least 20 times during this podcast, but uh, he's so sweet. He didn't correct me. Not too many times until I asked him to correct me. <laughs> ah, fantastic. Humble beginnings in Eastern Europe. All the way to Tampa, Florida. Fantastic. Taking care of his mama, too. I like that. I like that, man. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. Thank you so much, Dassey and Myron, for being on the program, What Makes You Famous. If you'd like to tell your story, I encourage you to give me a call at 501-470-6386 or email info at RadioWhat.com. That's it for me. It's Keys Dan, RadioWhat.com, DJLittleRock.com. Peace. I'm out of here. Be on Radio What? Call 501-470-6386. Say your name, where you're from, and you're listening to What? The music you want is on RadioWhat.com. If you like what you hear, follow What Makes You Famous social media. Use the hashtag What Makes You Famous. Follow on Facebook at What Makes You Famous. Follow on Instagram at What Makes You Famous. Follow on Twitter at Makes Famous and follow on YouTube at Keys Dan.
Leave What Makes You Famous podcast a review and subscribe. Listen to What Makes You Famous podcast on Podbean, iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, and Spotify, and almost anywhere you find podcasts. Tell your story on my podcast, What Makes You Famous. Call 501-470-6386 and leave a message to set up a time. You can support What Makes You Famous using the PayPal link, paypal.me forward slash keys dan email info at radio what.com what makes you famous podcast is a production of keys dan enterprises incorporated at keys dan.com thank you for listening radio what the music you want with some great, great quotes it is the mark of an educated man to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it aristotle the music you want radio what dot com.